Okay, in this second video for uh, section 2.5, it's kind of fun actually, I think you're going to like this. Uh, instead of giving you the function and asking you to find the vertex and all that, I'm going to give you the graph and ask you to find the function. Or perhaps I'll give you some information about the function, have you come up with the function itself. And it turns out there's really three forms we've looked at uh, for quadratic functions. Um, it turns out depending on what you're given you might want to write it in one of these, these three forms. Now obviously if you're given the vertex, if you can read the vertex you, you, you'd use this this form to, to write the equation. If you're given the x-intercepts, if you, if you can read them from the graph perhaps, you'd use this this form. And you'd use the first one uh, if you can't use the first, the second two. So again, you would use this first one. Uh, you'd, you, you can read three points from the graph perhaps and hopefully one of them will be the y-intercept because remember if you know the y-intercept you know c so that, that makes it a lot easier. Uh, you would use the second one if you, if you can read the vertex on a point. And the reason why you have to read a point is because that's, that's how you find a. I'll show you in just a minute. And you'd use this one if you can read the x-intercepts and, uh, and, and a point. Again you need, you need to know a point to find a. So here's what I'm talking about. Uh, suppose you're given a graph like this and, and you want to find the equation of the quadratic function. Now you know a couple of things. First of all, it's, A is going to be negative because it opens down. And it looks like, since you can read the vertex, it looks like 2 comma 3, then you should definitely use this, this version to find the equation. The vertex is 2 comma 3, so H is 2 and K is 3. So we're almost done actually. All you need to do is find A. Uh, uh, there, so the way you find A is you have to read another point. There might be lo several points you can pick. The point 1, 1 looks like an easy point. And you just plug in 1 for x, 1 for y. If y is 1 and x is 1, this just becomes negative 1 squared, which is just 1. So you get 1 equals a plus 3. That means a equals negative 2. So here's your function. f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 3. Yeah, don't, don't assume a is negative 1. It, it could be something else. Okay, let's keep on going. Now this one, notice the vertex isn't that easy to read, but I think you can read the x-intercepts pretty easily. Negative 4 and 2. So since you can read the x-intercepts, I would suggest using this version of the quadratic function. Remember, if it has an x-intercept at negative 4, that means x plus 4 is a factor. If it's x-intercept at 2, that means x minus 2 is a factor. And you've got to put an a on here because there's infinitely many quadratic functions that have those two x-intercepts. How do you find a? The same way we did before, we have to pick, we have to read another point from the graph. The y-intercept looks like a, a good candidate, 0, negative 4. So you plug in 0 for x and negative 4 for y, and you can find a. Notice if x is 0, you get a times 4 times negative 2 here. And if y is negative 4, you get this. Negative 8a is negative 4, that means a is positive 1 half. Makes sense, a is positive. So the answer is, the function is 1 half times the quantity x plus 4 times x minus 2. Make sure when you work these problems on quizzes and tests that you bring all the information together and write the actual function. Okay, in this next one, notice that the uh, the vertex is not easy to read and also the x-intercepts aren't easy to read. So this is a case where you may have to use the first version. Hopefully you can read the y-intercept. The y-intercept is, is 0 comma 5, right? f of 0 is 5. f of 1 is also 3. That's a good point to pick. And also, how about f of negative 2 is 3? So I was able to read three points from the graph. One of them is the y-intercept. Why is that nice? Because remember, the y-intercept is always c. So, so you already know one of the coefficients. Now how do you find a and b? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use the other two points and get two equations and two unknowns in a and b. And then we're going to solve the system of two equations in a and b to find them. So you plug in the point x equal 1, y equal 3. We're plugging it into here. So y is 3. When x is 1, this becomes a plus b plus 5. Subtract 5, so we're down to here. Negative 2 equals a plus b. Now, um, let's plug in a different point. Plug in the point uh, when x is negative 2, y is 3. So y equals 3. And then when you plug in negative, I'm sorry, when you plug in negative 2 for x, let's go back up here. If x is negative 2, isn't this a times 4, right? When x is negative 2 here, you get minus 2b plus 5. So when you subtract 5, you get this. And when you divide by negative 2, you get this. So these are the two equations. And the way you solve them, in this case, the way I'm going to solve these two e equations is 
I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to subtract the first one minus the second one. You see that? If you subtract negative 2 minus 1, you get negative 3. A minus negative 2A is 3A. B minus B is 0. So that cancels the B, so A is, one, a is negative 1. But if A is negative 1, uh, if you go back, well, you can, you can find B, because if A is negative 1, and A and negative 2 equals A plus B, doesn't B also have to be negative 1? So there, there's your function, f of x is negative x squared minus x plus 5. It's a little bit of work, but that's, that's what you have to do. Uh, let's, let's do it. Oh, here, here's one to try. See if you can read this graph. Uh, try to find the, the formula for this function right here. Okay, which one did you use? It turns out on this one, I think you could have either used the vertex or the x-intercept one. If, if you did it different ways, your function might look a little different, but when you multiply it out, it'll be the same. All right, let's use the vertex one. I, I always say if you, if you can use the vertex one, do it. So the vertex is at negative 1, 8. So if you plug in negative 1 for h, you get, you get a times the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 8. Now how do we find a? Let's plug another point in. How about the y-intercept? When x is 0, y is 6. Now when x is 0, you, we're, we're plugging it into here. You get a times 1, right? Plus 8. So a would be negative 2. So there is here's your function. You should have gotten negative 2 times the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 8. Okay, on this next one, you may not always be given the graph. You may be given information about the function. In this case, I'm, I'm giving you two x-intercepts and a point. So which, which, ver which, which, um, which version of the quadratic function should you use? I'd probably use this one, wouldn't you? Also, it's always a good idea to draw a graph, or just a picture to see what's going on. You get two, two x-intercepts and a point. If you plug in the x-intercepts, you get this. If you plug the point in, 1 comma 6, y is 6, x is 1, so this becomes a times 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12, divided by negative 12, a is negative 1 half. This is the answer. Nice, huh? Okay, try, try, this, now, try this one right here. See if you can do this one. See if you can find the um, equation of the quadratic function where uh, h of 0 is 4, h of 1 is 5, and h of 2 is 8. Okay, again, it might be nice to um, draw a picture. Uh, don't assume any of these is, is, is a vertex. Don't, don't, don't assume that 0, 4 is the vertex. We don't really know that for sure. Uh, it's not stated. So, but we do know it's, it's the y-intercept. So start with that. You use this version of the quadratic function. Start with this. And then uh, let's get two equations and two unknowns to, um, to find the other, uh, other uh, coefficients a and b. Plug in the point 1 comma 5, so y is 5, x is 1, so you get 5 equals a plus b plus 4. So that means a plus b equals 1. Now let's plug in the point 2 comma 8. If you plug in 2 comma 8, we're plugging in um, 2 for x and 8 for y, so I think you get this. You get 8 equals 4a plus 2b plus 4. Again, I'm going up here, plugging it in. I'm going to subtract 4. I'm going to divide by 2. So this is the other e equation. So now when you solve that system of two equations and two unknowns, what are you going to do here? I'm going to subtract the second one minus the first one, because what's 2 minus 1? Uh, that's 1. And what's, um, what's 2a minus a? That's a. And what's b minus b? That's 0. So when you subtract the second one minus the first one, you get a equals 1. But if a equals 1, since a plus b equals 1, b has to be 0. So it turns out, well, what does it mean? It turns out that was the vertex. 0, 4 was the vertex, wasn't it? Uh, the function, but we didn't know that it wasn't given, so you can't assume it. Hit the pause button and work these two problems right here. To the second one first. I, I drew a picture here. It looks kind of like this. It's this one again. So I, I found the vertex. I uh, plug in the point 1, 2, so I get this equation. I plug in the point 2, negative 1, I got this equation. Solve the system of two equations, I got a equals uh, negative 2, so that b equals 3, so this is what I got, negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Now for the second one, if the only x-intercept is negative 2, then it has to be the vertex, right? So that's easy, I'm going to use this version, and then uh, all I have to do is find a, plug in the point negative 1, 3, you get this. I got A equal 3. So that is your answer. Got to go. Bye-bye.